So today we're going to be talking about plants that you should not be pruning in the fall. We're also going to be doing the unboxing of the Saker Mini Chainsaw. And if you've never been here before, my name is Marlene. Welcome to Marlene's How To's, my home and garden channel. With the coming of the fall season, as gardeners, we typically want to go in and get our garden cleaned up, get our yard looking nice and tidy. And there's a temptation to prune back some of our plants, but there are some that should not be pruned at this time. The first one is actually azaleas. These are so beautiful. I think these make a great addition to any southern garden. And these ones are actually called encore azaleas because they bloom in the spring and then again in the fall. And the reason why you would not want to cut these in the fall is because they bloom on dead wood. And if you cut them off at this time, then what's going to happen is you're going to be losing all of these wonderful blooms that you would have had in the spring. So it's best to wait until after they bloom to go in and prune them out. These right here are some beautiful rhododendrons. Aren't they absolutely gorgeous, guys? I tell you, they're just beautiful. And the same rule applies again. These are cousins to the azaleas. So again, for the same reason, you want to go in and trim them back after they bloom. Next would be our blooming cherries, peaches, and plum trees. They are susceptible in fall and winter to a fungus called silver leaf. And if they're wounded, of course, they're much more susceptible, so it's best to wait. And plus, you want to get these beautiful flowers as well too, right? So you just go in and you wait, and then when they're finished, you cut them off. These right here are some beautiful saucer magnolia, also called the tulip tree. And this is one of the first things that blooms in my garden in the spring when everything else is down, except maybe a few of my bulbs. Now, the thing with um, saucer magnolia is that they actually heal very slowly. And so if you cut them, they can be susceptible to diseases, especially when they're so stressed out at that time of the year. If you cut them, you know, because of the, the weather that they have to deal with. And then, of course, you don't get to enjoy these beautiful spring blooms here as well. So for two reasons, you would definitely want to, you know, hold off and do that until after they bloom in the spring. They're also susceptible to what's called canker sores. So when those come around, you, you go in in the springtime and you can always, you know, prune them back cut the lower branches to whatever design you want for your plant as it grows up over the years and just cut off those branches that have any canker sores on them. And if you're liking this video so far, be sure to give me a thumbs up and share it out with those that you think it might help. So our next one here, this one is Spirea. And I can't say that this one is in my garden. I wish if it were, it was so beautiful when you saw it up in the hills of Pigeon Forge. Absolutely gorgeous. And these are also spring bloomers again, so you want to hold off on these until that time. Now look how beautiful they are beside the calla lilies. And the thing about them too is that I was told by um, Annalise's friend Shelly that it actually helps to keep aphids away. And aphids can be such an annoying pest in the garden. So of course, this is doing double duty. So even the more reason to have some of these and to wait until after they bloom, then you go in and you can enjoy them. Because you certainly wouldn't want to miss those, you know, in your spring garden. Next now we have Tandiva hydrangea, also like the oak leaf hydrangeas, they're very similar as well. These are another one again that you want to wait until after they bloom to go in and take them out. And aren't they absolutely gorgeous? I just love how they look. They almost look like something that's bridal, you know, like lace. That's how I see them. And these are not lace cap hydrangeas, they're different. Now for these hydrangeas that I have in my garden, I, you know, you can actually prune these in the fall. You know, this would be the, one of the exceptions to the hydrangea family. But honestly, I prefer to wait until in the spring when I know that I can see where the blooms are coming up. Then I'll go in and take them out at that time. And I'll be doing a future video on hydrangeas, different types and things to look for with them. So that should be coming up. And I just wanted to say that if you like flowers and gardening even half as much as I do, be sure to hit the subscribe button and tap on the notification bell twice so you never miss an upload. And also you'll get to see my past videos as well too. I have shorts, I have live videos, all of those things are there for you to enjoy. So let's get some information. And now we're gonna go ahead with the unboxing of the Saker Mini Chainsaw. And this is not a sponsored review. They sent it to me and I'm gonna give you my honest opinion and show you exactly how it works. So it came to us pretty quickly, so we were quite excited about that because I really wanted to see what it would look like and how it was work, would work for us. So I went in and I you know, went ahead and got it opened. You can see it's nicely packaged here. Came over from Amazon. 
and this is what it's looking like so far you can see it's nicely insulated in there with the you know the plastic um insulation that they have in there so so far we are looking good let's go ahead and put those off to the side and already i'm liking how it's packaged and it's pretty, fairly lightweight. I mean, you're going to expect, expect to have some weight with a chainsaw, but it's pretty lightweight, I would say. So I was quite happy about that because I don't like to have tools that are kind of like really too heavy to lug around. So let's go on to the next step, which is to get the plastic off. And I always like to see plastic coming on my things because that way I know it hasn't been returned. No one has used it before. So, you know, I'll be the first one on it there. So let's go ahead and get that going. We're going to take off the part that's on there and that's really nice it shows up you know your product there so we're going to go ahead and pull the locks very easy to do and it has a little catch there so you want to make sure that you're and that's really for safety so i like it. it doesn't just flop open and you have to go in and do two things to get it going so let's take a look now and see what we have inside here so this was a pleasant surprise i was not expecting to see that they have some safety goggles in there this is your charger cord because of course it is cordless so you're going to be needing that and this would be the battery right here and there are two of the two of them and i'll show you what they look like without the plastic a little further in the video and this is the star of the show right here this would be our chainsaw it just looks so handy i love it love it already and we had some gloves in here these are not heavy duty gloves but they still help to offer some protection against calluses and all of that in your hands and we have two chainsaws in here as well so I thought that was really nice for them to not just put one, but to put two. We have our little screwdriver here. We need to pull it apart. We have our socket tool there as well. And we also have the oil, you know, to keep it lubricated. And of course, there is the manual. And as I always say to my family, whenever any kind of tool comes, it's good, to, or any kind of thing you have to assemble, it's good to just read the manual first, at least glance over on it so that way it's easier for you but some people prefer to you know start first and then come back to it if they get stuck so it just depends on what you prefer but this is what they're looking like now with the other wrapper on them you can see here it looks very handy i like it, it looks very sleek i like the color could have been pink too but i'm okay with this <laughs> plus it's versatile you know the color for the whole family and some people like blue anyway so this would be perfect for you so i like it so far See the two batteries there, the chainsaws and everything. So now we have to get it charged up. So over here, the light comes on when you have it plugged in. And right here, this is the indicator of the charge. So when you press it, if all of the lights come on green, then you know that you are good to go. Maybe one or two. And it's so easy to put this battery on, guys. You, know, you check it first, make sure you're charged up. You just turn it and slip it right in. And I thought that that was just so, so easy. Unbelievable. And you press that button right there and it comes off very easily, just as easily as it went on. And of course, you have to remember to put the oil on the chainsaw so it's going to work well for you. So this is the tree that we're cutting down here right now. This is our Rose of Sharon. A little heartbreaking because, you know, this tree has been here for so many years. But we had a very, very harsh winter and it died. And we thought we'd, you know, wait for a while to see if maybe it would come back. We kept hoping, kept looking, and it never, ever came back. So we know that this tree basically is dead. It could surprise us, but we're going to cut it down today. And just to show you what it looks like, um, what it looked like in the past, these beautiful um, purple pink flowers that you can see on here, they're so gorgeous. Hummingbirds love them, ants love them, bees love them. And now they're gone. And that's just a part of gardening. Sometimes, you know, the weather, you know, has a really, you know, unexpectedly cold winter and you, you may lose a few plants. But over here, though, the white ones did come up um, in the spring, late spring and summer. And there's a small purple one that we still have, but it's smaller than this. But it's going to come up and maybe we'll get a spring coming off from it. I don't know. We'll see. So this is the safety part of this tool right here. Another safety feature. You have to press that button down and press the trigger at the same time. And then it will work for you. If you don't do that, it's not going to work. And I love that. So over here, we're sewing into it. And honestly, I was pleasantly surprised to see how easily it went through. Because this, you know, this is, this tree is dead. So we went through and we cut it off. And just by scale to show you the size of it, that's how thick it is right there. 
So I thought it worked pretty well. So we said, well, let's go in and try it again. We went and put another one over here. Pretty much the same story again right there. We took off the side branch as well. You can see the one that is still alive. That's a separate plant. They're close together, but it's a separate plant. So then we said, let's go and try something that's a little bit bigger, which is this um, silver maple. And this is a case when you can cut some of your trees down, you know, if you don't want them around anymore, if you wanted this one to go. So we went ahead and we cut it down. Because typically you want to cut your trees when they're dormant or dead. Otherwise you leave them unless you just don't want them there anymore. You take them out. So that was pretty, pretty good. So we basically give the mini, the Saker mini uh, electric chainsaw a five star because we really liked everything about it. Now back to the plan. So this right here is a Bradford pier. And the reason why you would not want to prune this one in the fall is because if it's still active, it's not dormant, it sends a lot of suckers out and it can be very invasive. So be careful on that one. And these right here are some beautiful cone flowers. And you would not want to prune these in the fall if you're wanting to leave them for seeds for the birds because it gives seeds to the birds for the winter. I, on the other hand, because I put a lot of bird seeds out, I know that they're going to be fine, you know, around my yard anyway. So I go in and I prune them out. But if you wanted to, you know, just provide that for wildlife, you know, putting out seeds and all of that, then definitely go ahead and leave them in. But I just like to tidy it up a little bit. So that's kind of your decision. Now let's take a look and see some of them that we had on the list in addition. So we have Laura Petalum and Forsythia. I don't have the pictures here, but you can always take a look at them. If you have them, you already know. And we have viburnum and crabapple as well that you should not be pruning in the fall for the same reason. So guys, be sure to check out my autumn playlist. I'm going to be putting that on there for you for all things autumn. You know, just go through and check all the different things. If you haven't subscribed yet, be sure to hit the subscribe button. I do thank you so much for watching. And I certainly hope to see you in the next video. Take care.